You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on The Other 90%. More wisdom in less time. This is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on The Other 90%. How to Unlock Your Vast, Untapped Potential for Leadership and Life by Robert K. Cooper. We'll start with a quote. Are you closer right now to where you want to be than you were a half hour ago? End quote. So Robert Cooper says you're only using about 10% of your potential. Eek. The good news is that he's got some great ideas about how you can tap into the other 90%. Highly recommend the book. Start by asking yourself, what's the most exceptional thing I've done this week? He says, and follow that by asking yourself, quote, what's the most exceptional thing I will do next week? Seriously, stop Get out a pen and paper if you can. If you can't, just push pause and think about it. Otherwise, write and ask yourself the questions, what's the most exceptional thing I've done this week? And then ask, what's the most exceptional thing I will do next week? Try it out. Those simple questions might just change your life. And when you're done with that, let's go ahead and jump into some of his great ideas about how we can unlock our vast, untapped potential for leadership and life. We'll start with the first big idea, excel. He says, quote, Yes, there are times when the gold medal only goes to the winner, but not in the race of life, where the winners are those who are superior not to others, but to their former selves, end quote. So don't compete, excel. Are you superior to yesterday's former version of yourself? Good. Let's keep that momentum up. And as William Faulkner says, don't bother just to be better than your contemporaries or predecessors. Try to be better than yourself. Cooper says, to excel means to reach beyond the best you have ever given, because doing so matters to you personally, for its own sake. It means to run your own race, as an individual, team, or organization. To excel is to know your greatest strengths and passions, and to emphasize them while honestly admitting and managing your weaknesses, end quote. And from Eric Fromm, who says, Independent of others and in concert with others, your main task in life is to do what you can best do and become what you can potentially be. All right, the next big idea is syntropy. Quote, Every moment of our lives, we are either growing or dying, and it's largely a choice, not fate. Throughout its life cycle, every one of the body's trillions of cells is driven to grow and improve its ability to use more of its innate yet untapped capacity. Research biologist Albert Zenz Georgi, who was twice awarded the Nobel Prize, called this syntropy which he defined as the innate drive in living matter to perfect itself. It turns conventional thinking upside down. As living selves or as people, there is no staying the same. If we aim for some middle ground or status quo, it's an illusion. Beneath the surface, what's actually happening is we're dying, not growing. And the goal of a lifetime is continued growth, not adulthood. End quote. Syntropy. What a brilliant concept. It reminds me of Maslow's comment that in any given moment, we have two options, to step forward into growth or to step back into safety. I love that. And I like to think of it this way. We wake up in the morning. Is our first act a step forward where we get up immediately, we say the mantra we committed to or whatever, or do we step back into safety, staying in bed, hitting snooze, whatever? Plus one, we're keeping count here, plus one if you stepped forward, minus one if you stepped backward. So in the PDF, I have this little line, and it starts with zero in the middle, and it goes plus one, plus two, plus three, all the way up to plus 100, heading to the right on an x-axis. Then heading to the left, we have negative one, negative two, negative three, minus 100. So back to your first act or thought, or whatever you did in the morning. You're either at plus one or minus one, right? Depending on whether you stepped forward or we went backward. So notice that the difference between where you could be and where you actually are, if you went backward, is actually two units apart, not one. All right? So how about the next moment? 
You go forward plus one or back minus one. The next moment, forward or back. The next moment, forward or back. Moment to moment to moment. You fast forward to an end of the day in all those moments. Where are you? Are you at plus 25,000 or minus 25,000? Pay attention because the weight of those negative numbers is going to make it really hard for you to sleep well. (laughs) You don't want to go home, turn on the TV, put some alcohol on your body, whatever you can do to numb yourself if you accumulate a lot of negatives throughout the day. So step forward and step in line with the natural force of syntropy, that natural force in nature that wants to perfect itself in you. Pretty please do that. Thank you. All right, the next big idea is tonight God is in the house. I love this story. Have you heard the story of Art Tatum? It's an awesome story. So Art was one of the world's greatest jazz pianists. And here's his story. He was born partially blind in Toledo, Ohio in 1909, and he became completely blind after he was beaten as an adolescent. But Art absolutely loved music, especially the piano. Now, Although his family couldn't afford a piano or lessons, when he wasn't at school or working, he'd have someone walk him over to the local saloon where he'd sit at a player piano and follow the keys for hours on end. Now, it was hard for him to keep up with the dizzying speed of the keys going up and down and up and down, but that's how he taught himself how to play. And here's the cool part. What Art didn't know, because he didn't have a teacher telling him it was impossible, was the fact that the manufacturers of player pianos of the 1800s and early 1900s used two pianists, not one, to make the rolls of paper music. So not knowing it was impossible... Art became the first pianist in history to play four hands of music with his two hands. It's amazing. So apparently, at one point, Art Tatum played with Fats Waller, another jazz legend. And Waller told the audience, I am just a piano player, but tonight, God is in the house. That's hot. All right, and that brings us to our next big idea, lighthouses. Cooper says, quote, It's easy to act as if you are a weather vane, always changing your beliefs and words, trying to please everyone around you. But we were born to be lighthouses, not weather vanes. Imagine a vertical axis running through the center of your heart, from your deepest roots to your highest aspirations. That's your lighthouse. It anchors you in the world and frees you from having to change directions every time the weather shifts. Inside this lighthouse, there's a lens and a light. The light represents who you are when nobody else is looking. That light was meant to keep shining no matter how dark or stormy it gets outside. When you find that light inside you, you'll know it. And don't let anyone else dim it. And one more thing, remember to look for the light inside others. If at first you can't see it, look deeper. It's there. End quote. So you're a lighthouse, not a weather vane. How's your light? You want to turn up the voltage? Try this exercise to brighten it up. Write down the five values that describe or define who you are and what you stand for. So five values could be creativity, honesty, authenticity, fearlessness, courage, kindness, generosity, playfulness, wisdom, compassion, sensitivity, Whatever you want to come up with, what are five values that most describe or define who you are and what you stand for? Please, 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 please press pause right now. Get out a piece of paper if you can. If you're walking or hiking or working out or driving, press pause and think about it. What are the five values that describe or define who you are the most? Figure it out and turn up the voltage in your lighthouse. All right, I trust you did that. Let's move to the next big idea, the seemingly impossible. Quote, it takes great goals to lead us out of our everyday limits into accomplishing more than we ever thought we could or would, end quote. So what are your great goals? And I mean really, really great goals. Give yourself the freedom to really dream. And ask yourself the question, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? Let that soak in. What would you do if you absolutely 
knew beyond a shadow of the doubt that you could not fail. All right, write that down. Press pause again and answer that question. What would you do if you knew you could not fail? And start to align your life with that intention. To do anything else is to live out of integrity. So please, 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 please take steps in that direction. And here's some more big goal love quotes. Tom Peters, the brilliant business consultant and strategist, says, I don't want an epitaph on my gravestone that says, he would have pursued some big dreams in his life, but other people wouldn't let him. (laughs) And Thoreau says, if you have built your castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. And Vaclav Havel says, We must not be afraid of dreaming the seemingly impossible if we want the seemingly impossible to become a reality. Eleanor Roosevelt says, The future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. And James Allen says, The greatest achievement was at first and for a time a dream. The oak sleeps in the acorn, the bird waits in the egg, and in the highest vision of the soul, a waking angel stirs. Dreams are the seedlings of realities. So what are your dreams? What totally fires you up? Stretch yourself. Dare to put it on paper. Then dare to take steps in the direction of living those dreams. And while you do that, do not forget to make adversity your ally. Cooper has an entire chapter on how to deal with adversity and offers an array of brilliant strategies to step up to the challenge and push through to the other side. So this is one of my favorite big ideas from that section. He asks, quote, what can I do, however small, to gain some control over this situation, end quote. So taking action in the face of fear is another one of the themes echoed throughout the literature again and again and again and again. It makes me think of Paul Bunyan's character, Christian, in his book, Pilgrim's Progress. His hero has a shield that makes him invincible. As long as he heads straight at his problems with his shield, he's invincible. If he takes his challenges head on, nothing can harm him. But if he turns his back and avoids his challenges, he's vulnerable. How cool is that? Head straight at your problems, absolutely invincible, Avoid them, run away, you lose the power of your magic shield, and you are vulnerable. So head straight at your problems. Make adversity your ally. And remember David Schwartz, who says it brilliantly in his classic, The Magic of Thinking Big. He says, action cures fear. Indecision and postponement, on the other hand, fertilize fear. Jot that down in your success rule book right now. Action cures fear, he says, end quote. And Susan Jeffers wrote an entire brilliant book on the subject. She called it Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. So the next time you're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, go ahead and take a deep breath in. Ah, Make that three deep breaths. Always feels great. And then smile to yourself and write down a few things you can do right now to gain some control over your situation. And then, of course, Start doing them. And remember, make adversity your ally. The next big idea is a great one. It's called gradualness kills. Quote, say no to the drug of gradualness. It was Martin Luther King Jr. who spoke out strongly against making slow changes. Either we risk or we don't, he said. Either we change or we don't. There's no acceptable middle ground because it lulls us into complacency. Lasting changes rarely occur when we ease our way into the future. They come when we leap. The leap themselves can be small or large, but once we take action, we see things differently. And for many of us, there's no going back. It reminds me of William James's brilliant statement. He says, to change your life, one, start immediately, two, do it flamboyantly, and three, no exceptions. (laughs) How great is that? You want change? Change. Which leads us to the next big idea, change. Quote, Aristotle said, Time does not exist except for change. The origin of the word change is the Old English cambium, which means to become. In other words, time does not exist except for becoming something new. What exactly are you choosing to become? End quote. 
It's amazing. I never knew that change came from the old English cambium, which actually means to become. So how are you changing? And are you changing? And what exactly are you choosing to become? As you contemplate that, make sure you get some soul nourishment. That's the big idea that's coming up next. Quote, it is heartening to realize that although we may crave comfort and routine, we nourish the soul's growth primarily through what is hard. As Darwin saw it, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but those who are most responsive to change. End quote. It's really powerful. Are you embracing change yet? Cooper has some great ideas about how we can feed our soul by embracing change. Do you take the same route to work every day? Mix that up. Do you eat the same foods every day? Mix it up. Break out of your routines. Nourish your soul. Pretty please. All right, the next big idea is 30 minutes. This is the same quote we started the uh, note off with. He asked the great question, are you closer right now to where you want to be than you were a half hour ago? Well, there's a gauge of how you're doing. So are you closer right now to where you want to be than you were a half hour ago? Try asking yourself that question throughout the day today, especially when you feel yourself slipping into time-wasting stuff. In those moments, pause, step back, check in with what you're committed to in your life. Ask yourself, am I closer to where I want to be right now than I was a half hour ago? It's a really powerful way to keep yourself in integrity. All right, and the final big idea in this note is small choices and destiny. Quote, William James, a pioneer in philosophy and psychology, said, All of life is but a mass of small choices, practical, emotional, and intellectual, systematically organized for our greatness or grief. When asked if these choices could be altered, he replied, yes, one at a time. But we must never forget that it's not only our big dreams that shape reality, the small choices bear us irresistibly toward our destiny, end quote. That's beautiful. I want to pause and rewind and replay that. We're shaping our destiny moment to moment to moment. So what habits do you have that don't serve you? What do you need to do less of starting now? Good, work on that. And the next time you find yourself drifting in the direction of these less than ideal behaviors, notice it and make the small choice to bring yourself back. Okay, those are the habits you don't want to have in your life. What habits do you have right now that truly serve you, that bring out the best in you and point you in the direction of your greatest life? Good, make an inventory of those. Identify those that nurture you and nurture them. Build your life around these habits. Never let a day go by when you aren't nurturing them. And may we never forget William James's wisdom that the small choices bear us irresistibly toward our destiny. Beautiful. All right. That was a whirlwind tour of some of the big ideas from one of my favorite books. It's one of those books you can read from page one on or you can pick up anywhere and get inspired. And I hope you go out and get it. And if you dug this note, I think you'll enjoy my note on another book by Cooper called Get Out of Your Own Way. So here's to tapping into that other 90%. And before we officially say goodbye for this time, let's look at Robert Cooper the author of The Other 90%, some of the other notes I think you'll enjoy, and some of the quotes from the sidebar of the PDF. So Robert K. Cooper, PhD, is a faculty member of the Lessons in Leadership Distinguished Speaker Series. He's called a national treasure by Professor Michael Ray of the Stanford Business School. and He's recognized for his pioneering work on excelling under pressure and the neuroscience of trust, initiative, and commitment. He's designed and presented leadership development programs for many organizations, including 3M, Ford, Sun Microsystems, Novartis, and Allstate. You can learn more at robertcooper.com, and you can buy the book on a link in the PDF. So if you like this note, I think you'll also like uh, the philosopher's notes on Cooper's other book, Get Out of Your Own Way, on The Magic of Thinking Big, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, and so many of the other titles in there. All right, and here are some of the quotes from the sidebar of the PDF. 
Robert Cooper says, Every moment of our lives, we are either growing or dying, and it's largely a choice, not fate. René Dubois says, Genius is childhood recaptured. Robert Cooper says, As Eli Weisel, Holocaust survival, Nobel laureate, and supporter of the Tibetan people said, We must understand that there can be no life without risk. And when your spirit is strong, everything else is secondary, even the risks. Hegel says, We may affirm that absolutely nothing great in the world has been accomplished without passion. Robert Cooper says, It's easy to act as if you are a weather vane, always changing your beliefs and words, trying to please everyone around you. But we were born to be lighthouses, not weather vanes. Grace Murray Hopper says, A ship in port is safe, but that is not what ships are for. Nelson Mandela says, There is not passion to be found playing small, in settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. Ashilla says, Great spirits meet calamity greatly. Euripides says, Adversity calls forth the soul's courage to bear unflinchingly whatever heaven sends. And Orison Marden says, Deep within humans dwell those slumbering powers, powers that would astonish them, that they never dreamed of possessing, forces that would revolutionize their lives if aroused and put into action. And Robert Cooper says, as Darwin saw it, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but those who are most responsive to change. Henry David Thoreau said, with all your science, can you tell me how it is and when it is that light comes into the soul? And again, Cooper says, are you closer right now to where you want to be than you were a half hour ago? I'm telling you, that's a really powerful question. All right, and two more. Hillel says, if not now, when? If not you, then who? And finally, Cooper says, we are each given the chance to leave a unique imprint on the world. What will be yours? Ah, it's a powerful way to wrap this up. We are each given the chance to leave a unique imprint on the world. What will be yours? Live that question, answer that question in your life, and you will tap into the other 90%. Wish you an absolutely amazing day and looking forward to sharing another note with you soon. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.